Let me tell you, that's a big help to a lot of parents uh, that need that because we are going through shoes in my house <laughs> nonstop to the point where I'm just ordering like the size up at the same time you so I can just have well. reserves. Yeah, I The mean, kids are growing that fast. <laughs> You're in that stage, right? They're just like, shoot yeah. overnight. There's a no shoe size. The good thing for you, Netta, is mm -hmm. that they're growing out of them so quickly that they're in good shape. I can just pass them oh, down to you and you get give new me, like, shoes. You give me brand new things all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your daughter grows through things so quickly. My uh, daughter's still wearing her glittery rain boots. There you go. Yes, your daughter's glittery rain boots are now her daily shoe footwear. They're perfect. <laughs> hey, let's check in with Evan here on a Friday. Are we uh, having a glittery Friday out there? Yeah, but you don't need the rain boots. That's yeah. the thing. You okay. can you can keep the glitter. In fact, I don't wholeheartedly support. <laughs> no, hey, I wholeheartedly support the glitter on our Friday. But uh, the rain boots, hey, you don't need them. But if Roy wants to wear them, I, I, I think that's a great idea. Why not, right? Uh, 601 on our Friday, we're going to start to let some of that sunlight in over the next couple minutes. And as we do so, we're going to slowly, slow and steady, see an increase in temperatures. But for now, we're pretty chilly out there. Mostly 40s on the screen there. Ramona right now at the freezing point, 32 degrees. Nice and cool in that pocket of air, cold air. 48 in Carlsbad and 51 in Del Mar. Forecast for the day points to upper 60 and low 70 degree highs. A lot of sunshine in the mix today before we start to see those Santa Ana winds pick up tonight into tomorrow. But the weekend itself looking beautiful. We'll check in on that just a few minutes from now. Looking at traffic this morning, there has been nothing to mention as far as crashes or collisions go. Still some construction notices out there, but not really uh, slowing anyone down to start off the morning commute. Looks like it is quiet on the roads. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. A new COVID vaccine requirement is taking effect at the border starting this weekend. It's going to impact a lot of folks here. Starting tomorrow, essential travelers also need to have their shots. CBS 8's Dana Maria McNichol live near the border in Santa Cedar here now with more on what's changing. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. That's right. Non U.S. citizens that are essential travelers traveling into the United States will now need to show proof of vaccination. Now, these essential travelers were given a grace period for having to show that vaccination when their non essential traveler counterparts had. So, back in November, as we remember, uh, the border was open for both essential and non essential travelers. Now, this move does not apply to U.S. citizens, permanent residents, or U.S. nationals who are returning from abroad. Uh, this requirement is also expected to have implications on the trucking industry. Now, those who are essential and non-essential travelers will need to show uh, ver verbally attest to their COVID-19 vaccination status at the border. They might not be asked to show their vaccination card, but they need to be ready with proof of a vaccination card outlined on the CDC website. Also present a valid Western Hemisphere travel initiative such as a valid passport, trusted travel program card, or enhanced tribal card. They also need to be prepared to present any other relevant documents requested by U.S. Customs and Border Protection Officer during an inspection. Now, COVID-19 is not required. Uh, testing is not required for entry via land, port of entry, or ferry terminal. So you don't need to show a negative test or anything of that sort. But again, maybe check those wait times starting over the weekend as this does start tomorrow. This could impact those wait times. Negative test is not required, but proof of vaccination is. Live in San Ysidro, I'm Dana Marie McNichol for CBS 8. Dana Marie, thank you. New this morning, a proposed state bill could let kids ages 12 and older receive COVID vaccines without parental consent. Democratic State Senator Scott Weiner introduced the proposal, saying California already lets preteens get medical care for sexually transmitted diseases without parental approval. This bill would let Californian kids between 12 and 17 years old get any vaccine without a parent or guardian's consent. Republican Assemblyman James Gallagher criticized this proposal, saying parents are vital to these important health decisions. San Diego County's COVID case surge may be slowing. That's according to researchers at UC San Diego who say the measurements for COVID in wastewater are trending down. You know, the wastewater can say a lot. The county's case numbers could soon follow in that trend. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live at UC San Diego where the study is taking place. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, and what it has shown actually is a 20% reduction in the concentration of the Omicron variant. Remember, UCSD uses that wastewater in order to identify variants that could be in the community. And overwhelmingly right now, Omicron was the dominant variant in that concentration, but it's seen 
since a 20% drop here. So that is good news because the idea here now is that we could soon see the county case rate follow. Now, you, that usually does point to that happening. Uh, of course, as we know, the Omicron variant has been especially troublesome due to its more contagious nature. And when I tell you that it does make up the most dominant of the variants, it was 95% of the wastewater concentration results. The remaining 5% was the Delta variant. So again, if we're seeing a 20% drop in the uh, Omicron var uh, concentration over the last two weeks, then that means we could likely see an overall drop in cases. Now, researchers believe this data could also help us navigate future variants and what else COVID has in store for us. So it's not even just identifying the amount of numbers, but also identifying a lot of key features and key data that could help us moving forward. The good thing about wastewater is in a lot of areas where you don't have enough testing or, you know, you just don't have the resources to test every person every day, you can use wastewater um, as a passive surveillance tool and only test when you see a positive in the wastewater. And how they actually go about testing that wastewater is a really interesting process. So you can actually go to our website, cbs8.com, click on that story link to learn more. Eric and Netta. Chris Grover reporting live. Thanks, Chris. And even if the surge is slowing here right now, we still have high case numbers. Take a look here. Just over 14,000 new cases are being reported in San Diego County. That's the most we've seen in any of the past eight days. The hospitalization rate, however, does seem to be slowing down. 14 more patients were admitted, bringing that total to just over 1,300. 18 were sent to intensive care. Sadly, we have six more deaths to also report. Federal investigators have now joined the search for burglars targeting many homes in the North County. You see what they're doing here. This has been happening since August. Police say in some of these cases, the thieves use patio furniture just like that to climb up and get to the second floor, and that's where they'll break a window to get inside. From there, they go in, steal high-end items like purses and jewelry, and police say they are looking for at least four suspects right now. Call police if you have any information. A plan to add fencing along the train tracks in Del Mar gets initial approval. Despite the opposition, we've been reporting on this. The North County Transit District is adding fencing after several deaths over the years as people cross the tracks. There were four reported since 2016. The fence could be up to six feet high, but NCTD is giving the California Coastal Commission and City of Del Mar until February 28th to agree on many modifications. Still, many people in the area don't want to restrict access to the beach. People like live here and th that's the whole reason that they're, they're living here for the view and honestly easy access to the beach. Now during Chris Groh's live shot, a lot of people were crossing the tracks just like that. Critics do say other options should be considered. And we have some sad news in the world of music this morning. Rock superstar Meatloaf has died. Meatloaf, whose real name is Marvin Leaday, is most known for that song, I'd Do Anything for Love. His 1977 record, Bad Out of Hell, was one of the best-selling albums of all time. He also was in movies like Fight Club and Rocky Horror Picture Show. No word on the cause of death. The singer was 74 years old. Oh. Such a popular song that was <laughs> yeah. when it came out. I mean, it was on every radio station. I feel like I know every word of that song. And still. I never quite figured out what that was. He would do anything for love, but he won't do that. The age-old question. It's a what mystery. What was that? What we'll never know. That? We'll never know. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, he certainly will be missed. Uh, let's turn now to your forecast. It's a nice one, yeah? it, I have to okay. say. I mean, even <laughs> though it is still dark outside and you just kind of have to trust me on this one, it is going to start to appear nice over the next uh, about 20 minutes or so. We're starting to let just a, a minor amount of light in. We're not facing uh, the east right now, but uh, earlier when the cameras were facing east, you could kind of see the little glimmer of that sunrise out there. Uh, so we're going to start to see more kind of twilight come in. So we'll see some of that light shine through on a clear start to the morning. And then as we head into your east, evening once we head toward that sunset boy it's going to be beautiful you could capture some beautiful photos along the coastline and feel free to send them our way forecast for the day is going to point to upper 60s and low 70s few high clouds along the coast and through your uh, deserts but for the most part we're going to be dealing with that complete sunshine across the board very similar to yesterday only minor difference is that temperatures are going to be uh, slightly cooler so instead of those upper uh, 60s and uh, mid 70s we'll be in about the mid 60s along the coastline if not the upper 60s and we should 
should be able to hit 70 along your inland valleys, whereas yesterday we made it well into the mid 70s. So a few degrees cooler. Uh, we also are contending with a cooler start to the morning, very similar to yesterday. We're at 46 degrees right now in San Diego. Going to warm up to 48 degrees within the next hour or so. We're going for 51 by 8 a.m. That means you can start to peel those layers off relatively quickly once the sun does come up. And here is that view. You can start to see some of that light shining through. Your headlines out there. Santa Ana wind gusts pick up tonight into tomorrow. Wind advisory takes effect at 10 p.m. That means that those gusts are going to be up to 45 miles an hour across the mountains and foothills. A very breezy end to the day today and a start to the morning tomorrow. Mostly sunny with warming temperatures over the weekend. Plenty of sunshine into next.